why, it was just three short weeks ago, in the first flush of reaction to WAPO's initial scandal story about Moore, that McConnell dropped this bomb on him full QAW at Sanatomaj Darmich McConnell re Roy Moore. Answers four questions capped W quote I believe the women, yes. At WAS11 at Rickline at ABC picked out Twitter.com Sexizzle Krez, Chris Williams at Chris News November 13, 2017 Three weeks later, a Dooley Chase and Mitch the Knife puts his dagger away asked by at Gustafinopoulos if he believes Roy Moore should be in the Senate, at Sonata Majdar says, I'm going to let the people of Alabama make the call. HTTPS T.Coast 9 Sob this week picked out Twitter.com not B1B1I, ABC News Politics at ABIC Politics December 3, 2017 That weird feeling you have right now is deja vu from half the GOP leadership turning on Trump last October after the Access Hollywood tape dropped, then slowly crawling back to him when it became clear from the polling that he hadn't been fatally damaged by it. McConnell's reversal is newsy, though, not just because he's Moore's future majority leader but because he went all in trying to beat him in the primary runoff. He hates Moore at least as much as Moore hates him, yet here he is grudgingly backing away from the Moore must go calls. What happened? Three things. Trump has since quasi-endorsed Moore by attacking his Democratic opponent and McConnell doesn't want another feud with the president. The passage of time has also made demands for Moore to quit increasingly futile. There was a chance after the WAPO story broke that Trump would try to push him out, that the Alabama GOP would oust him as nominee, or that Moore himself might drop out, giving the party time to find a replacement who'd stand a chance of winning in a state that read. The election's nine days away. Moore quit tomorrow, the new nominee would be unknown to most of the public unless McConnell somehow talked Jeff Sessions into resigning as AG to stand for election in Moore's place. From the standpoint of partisan self-interest, McConnell's better off having Moore win at this point and then figuring out what to do with him once he's seated. But there's another reason he's backing off. CBS is out with a new poll today in which it asked Alabama voters what effect McConnell's call for Moore to quit the race has had on their support for the candidate. That's some backfire not that Moore was ever going to quit but if McConnell hadn't been so eager to set up an establishment versus Moore narrative after the scandal broke, maybe support for him from Alabama Republicans would have been weaker and the state party would have moved against him. Unlikely, I know, but McConnell inadvertently made it easier to stand with the nominee. So now he's clamming up and telling Alabamians to do whatever they want. The new CBS poll has more up six, by the way, 4,943, which is right in line with every other post-Thanksgiving poll of the state except that curious WAPO poll from yesterday, which had Jones leading, 5,047. How to explain the discrepancy? Simple CBS thinks the electorate will be far more Republican than WAPO does. WAPO's sample was 38% Republican, 31% Democrat, and 27% Independent. CBS's sample is 46% Republican, 32% Democrat, and 21% Independent. The polls also diverged sharply on whether Moore's accusers should be believed. WAPO found Republicans split 1346 on that question while CBS finds them split 1771. Needless to say, if turnout on election day is as red as CBS expects, Moore should have no problem holding the seat. But note in 2014, a year of a Republican wave, the GOP's advantage at the polls in Alabama was R9. CBS is expecting R14 even though it's a special election, when turnout is always a regular, and the party's nominee has been damaged by scandal. Seems hard to believe Alabama Republicans will not only be more excited to vote now than they were three years ago but that they'll swamp Democrats and turn out in an election where the left is itching to send a message to Trump and more about a blue wave to come next year. This is a not great bit of that if or more from the CBS poll too. The pollster asked more voters why they're backing him a vote for more because your anti-Jones counts as much as it would if you were pro more, but just by way of comparison, Jones's voters said they were voting for him because they like him versus voting for him because they dislike more by a margin of 6,733. The fact that Republican voters are understandably more lukewarm about their nominee than Dems makes me wonder again how robust the GOP's turnout advantage will be. In fact, although only 9% of Republicans overall say they're voting for Jones, why 21% agree with McConnell's advice from mid-November that Moore should step aside. Even at this late date, knowing that Moore dropping out would mean chaos for the election and a likely Democratic victory, more than one in five Alabama Republicans would pull the trapdoor on Moore. How many of that 21% are going to go in the booth on Election Day, hold their noses, and vote for the Democrat? Impossible to predict, but it's a major X-factor.
As for McConnell, I realize he mutters something at the end of the clip above about having the Senate Ethics Committee consider Moore's past once he's seated as a senator but he's blowing smoke. There's no way the Senate is going to overrule the judgment of Alabamians on a scandal voters are why aware of, particularly when the scandalous behavior allegedly occurred many years before Moore took office and the president is on the sidelines cheerleading for him. Unless the committee comes up with something new from Moore's past and produces unusually solid evidence that it happened, they're going to lay off. As I said a few days ago, there won't even be a floor vote on expulsion.